All right, let's say, let's just, just for example, let's say you've just got home from taking some of the best photos of your life. You went to an absolute bucket shot spot. You got the best conditions ever. You came home, you're so hyped, you whack your SD card into your computer. And then, and then you, you open your shots and they're not sharp. Why? You thought you nailed everything. You've got your new camera, your brand new lenses, your gorgeous filters, whatever the case. You got up for sunrise seven days in a row. They're not sharp. What happened? Well, today we're gonna to be covering five reasons why your shots may not be sharp. And chances are, if you're shooting unsharp photos, it's gonna be one of these five reasons, or hey, who knows, maybe even more than one of these five reasons. But anyway, without further ado, let's dive in. So first reason why your photos may not be sharp is your ISO levels are way too high. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, Zach, what on earth does ISO have to do with the sharpness of my photos? Well, hey, you tell me. There's two shots on your screen right now. One was shot at ISO 100 and the other one was shot at ISO 25,600. Now tell me, what shot is sharper? You tell me, what do you think? What shot is sharper? Now, for some reason, whenever you jack your ISO up, a whole lot of digital noise gets added to your shot, which is of course normal because your sensor's sensitivity to light is getting jacked up like crazy. But whenever digital noise is added to your shot, guess what? a whole lot of muddiness in the shadows just creeps in and ruins your shot. Now, Lightroom has just introduced a brand new tool that more or less really helps this out, but it's not 100%. It's not an absolute savior to all photos. So keep this in mind. Do yourself a favor, the next time you go out to shoot, just double check your ISO levels aren't crazy and do a little bit of testing as well. What I like to do whenever I get a brand new camera is I sit down and I take the same photo over and over and over again, just turning my ISO up one at a time, at a time, at a time, whack them into Lightroom, and then I go through and understand exactly when my camera starts to really struggle with what ISO level it's on, and that's it. I write that down, I make a mental note, and I will never shoot over that ISO again unless I'm really pushed in a dark situation. But that's tip number one. Well, no, that's reason number one why your photos might be sharp, why they might not be sharp, goodness me, it's been a long day. Either way, it's a reason why your photos might not be sharp is your ISO levels are way too high. Reason number two, your focus mode is wrong. Nine out of 10 cameras, no, actually 10 out of 10 cameras have two focus modes. They've got autofocus single shot and autofocus continuous. And if for some reason you're shooting with Canon, which actually no, not for some reason, I would assume most of you be shooting with Canon. Let me know what you shoot with down in the comments below. But if you're shooting with Canon, this is gonna be autofocus single and autofocus servo AI. For whatever reason, the people over at Canon thought servo AI made more sense than autofocus continuous. Anyway, I digress. So you've got two autofocus modes, autofocus single shot and continuous. We're just gonna call it continuous. Autofocus single shot is for when you're shooting things like landscapes. It's when you're not moving and your camera isn't moving. And this is when you just half press your shutter button in, that's it, your camera will hunt, find focus and lock it in and you can take as many photos as you like until you let go of your shutter button and then repress it down, it'll refine focus and go from there. But when you're shooting continuous autofocus and this is when you and all your subject is moving around in the frame, this is when you can hold your shutter button down just halfway, you don't wanna be spraying and praying, you can hold it down halfway and your camera and lens is constantly gonna be updating focus. So keep this in mind, if you and your subject are moving around, Autofocus continuous, autofocus continuous it is. If you're not moving and your subject isn't moving, autofocus one shot, you'll be sweet. This is a very, very crucial one as to why you may or may not be taking sharp photos. Next up on the chopping block is your fingers. Now, <laughs> your fingers, I know, sounds like a bit of a joke, but if you shoot on a tripod and you're taking photos and you've got your tripod beautifully set up, you've got your camera, boom, set up on the tripod and you're snapping away. And as you can, as, you, as you're slowly just pressing that shutter button in, Boom, 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 boom. You're actually, slightly, uh, you're actually slightly moving your camera. Now, this isn't really an issue if your shutter speed is high enough. Let's say if your shutter speed is over, I'd say one over 100 and you're not using a super telephoto lens, but if you wanna make sure you're getting the best results possible, you have got two options. You can either use a shutter remote, which is something I don't have and I don't use. And most cameras these days, well, actually, no. Most cameras from any past days that have a battery turn on and a digital are gonna have a delayed shutter mode. Now this is perfect. What you can do, at least in Canon, you can turn your camera on, head over to your burst mode, and inside your burst mode settings, you'll be able to turn on a two or a 10 second timer. Now what this allows you to do is set your camera up on the tripod, get your shot composed, and then press in your shutter button, and then step away, and it's either gonna take two or 10 seconds, however long you set it to, to take the photo, and that's it. And this has given your camera enough time from your hand getting off the camera to just adjust from that little bit of shake, 
get still, take the photo, and you're good to go. This one isn't a super, super large one, but especially if you're taking uh, long exposure photos, this one is a crucial one for you. Okay, up to reason number four, and this is your aperture. Now, we all love low apertures, at least I'm a sucker for them. I absolutely love this little guy right here, the 50 millimeter f1.8. You can stop all the way down to 1.8 for about 160 US dollars. That is a bargain if I've ever heard of one. But anyway, your aperture could be making your photos unsharp, and here's why. Every lens has a sweet spot. For this guy right here, since you can go down to f1.8 and it's a prime lens, it's probably anything above f4 and below, let's say, f13. This is where you'll be getting the absolute sharpest results. But for example, for a lens like this one here, the 70 to 200 f4, F4 wouldn't be the sharpest, even though it may be on this little guy here. You'd probably be starting your range at about F6.3, where you'll be getting the absolute sharpest results. And once again, probably nothing above F13. And this is because when you're shooting with really low apertures, your focus plane becomes really small. So it's hard for your camera to absolutely nail the focus. And then when you're using too high of an aperture, the the kind of opposite happens. Your aperture is so small that it's only letting a little bit of light in. This is called diffraction. And then your focus plane is huge, which is great for your camera, but the amount of light coming in kind of gets a little bit messed up and can make your photos a little hazy, a little bit unsharp, a little bit eh, not good for you. But either way, what you want to do is just find your lens's sweet spot. This is very similar to shooting with ISOs, doing that little bit of testing before you go out to shoot. Find where your lens is absolutely sharpest. And if you're shooting, you know, with a super common lens like the 50mm 1.8, you should be able to just look this up online. Someone will tell you. I promise you someone's already done the hard work for you. So yeah, keep this in mind. Don't make your aperture too small. Don't make your aperture too high, especially if you're only focused on taking sharp photos. And there you go. Hopefully, problem solved. Alrighty, and last but not least, we've got your shutter speed. Now, there's a general rule of thumb in photography, and that is to make sure your shutter speed is always, when you're shooting handheld, always one over your focal length. So for example, let's say we're shooting with the 70 to 200 here. If I'm at 70, I wanna be at one over 70 for my focal length. For for my shutter speed. But if I'm shooting at 200 millimeters, I wanna be one over 200 as my shutter speed. And this way, you can somewhat ensure sharp photos. Now, this rule goes out the window if you're on a tripod, and it kinda of goes out the window if your camera has in-body image stabilization, or if your lens has stabilization. But either way, even you know, since this lens does have stabilization, I like to stick to this rule either way, because I know I would much rather take a, maybe a little bit of a darker photo. Let's say I'm shooting at 200 millimeters, my shutter speed is at one over 200, I would make sure my, I would much rather make sure my photos are sharp and maybe a little bit darker, just boost that in Lightroom, get a little bit of denoise on there, problem solved. But yeah, you can't really resharpen your photos if there's a little bit of motion blur or handshake in there whatsoever. So keep that in mind. Make sure whenever you're shooting photos, especially handheld, your shutter speed is at a minimum. That's the key there. A minimum of one over your focal length and you'll be good to go.